Hey, I'm Matt, and I'll be talking about the strategic marketing concepts. So what's strategy? Strategy is the blueprint that an organization runs by to ensure that they attract customers. What's the marketing concept? The marketing concept is marketing as a whole, regarding ensuring customers and organizations are satisfied by focusing not only on the company's needs, but also the customers. It's a perfect balance of 50% focus on the customer, 50% focus on the organization, and leaves both parties satisfied at the end. So what we'll discuss. Uh, in this, docu uh, in this uh, PowerPoint, we'll discuss the Net Promoter Score, NPS, the uh, Out of Home Media, which is OOHM, and then at the end of this, we'll discuss why this information might be beneficial to you, the audience. The Net Promoter Score, NPS, uh, was developed by Fred Reitschild in 2003. The NPS was made to accurately measure customer loyalty by having the customer rate their uh, experience with the product or service out of 10. Now this came in quite useful, um, though it did get quite a lot of scrutiny uh, in 2003 when it first came into fruition, but the fact that it's still around in 2018 and being used by brands such as Myers shows that it really wasn't a flop at all and uh, it's had quite a lot of potential. So the NPS measurement. While NPS uses a uh, measurement of customers giving a rating of 0 to 10, there are three categories of reviews. There's 0 to 6, which are detractors. These are the customers who would be likely to spread negative word of mouth of the products. Then there's people who chose 7 to 8, and these are the passives. They're the guys who are neutral and play really no part at all in the calculation of um, the uh, net promoter score. And then there's uh, people who pick between 9 and 10. Now these guys are the promoters. They're people who are likely to spread positive word of mouth about the product. And, um, you know, they, they go to show uh, how loyal people really were to the product or service. So the NPS calculation. It's, uh, the net promoter score is made up by a calculation of the percentage of promoters um, subtract the percentage of detractors. Now this goes on, you know, and it makes graphs a lot easier because it's a lot less numbers and clutter, and it really just shows the percentage um, and the overall um, the overall loyalty for the brand or the product. So here's the first example. Um, we got one here, um, and it shows the NPS rating by location. Now, as you can see, it's going most uh, most positive at the top to most negative. Now the red bar that shows all the people who uh, who were detractors and who would have spread w bad word of mouth about the area, and then the green on the right, which is the largest bar, um, not by far, but it's still the largest bar, and that shows the people who are positive about it. And the li the little yellow slither in between the two um, is the people who are sitting on the fence, the neutrals. Now, as you can see, um, the red bar is getting more and more and more wide as you go down, because um, this just goes to show, um, you know, as you go down, people being more and more negative about the areas, and you know, it, it really quite um, quite perfectly displays how people are feeling about these particular areas. The next one is an NPS report. Um, it was actually from the uh, the Myers 2017 annual report. Now um, they were going for um, you know achievements uh, hurdles achieved, um, and they have they they wanted to achieve uh, a twenty percent increase in uh, loyalty, and they did achieve this because they have a tick next to it. Um, this is an example of how reports go and how NPS is are still being used. You know this is 2017. That's 14 years after NPS is you know first started up and started being used. So out of home media. Out of home media, as stated in its name, is media that can be found out in public. The main areas um, are three categories actually, roadside, transport and rental. Now out of home media is ideal for capturing a larger audience, but it's also effective in attracting the attention of more specific audience members due to strategic placing of advertisements. This might be advertising laptops across the road from the school or advertising BMWs in upper class areas. It's just really kind of tearing, um, tearing your audience and knowing where your audience will be. So roadside advertising. 
there's quite a lot of roadside advertising. There's billboards, bus stops, phone booths. There's also public toilets, toilets, kiosks. They're really everywhere and they can be seen everywhere. Billboards are really effective because they're just so so hard to miss. You know, they come in sizes of, you know, larger than 25 meters, smaller than 25 meters, but they're generally, you know, they get seen by people, you know, every day, especially if they're in a populated area like in a town. Some people might see it two times a day. That's, you know, a frequency of two times. Um, just going to and fro uh, from work. You know, being able to swing past you, you'll have a look at it because it's just so large. Um, yeah, it's just really hard to miss these sorts of advertisements. Then there's bus stops. Bus stops are everywhere. And, you know, if you're waiting for a bus, which a lot of people do, um, you know, you're going to be sitting, you're going to have nothing else to look at. And, you know, there's this advertisement there. Like, why wouldn't you advertise there? And then phone booths, it's very same as the bus stops. You know, you haven't got anything else to look at. Why wouldn't um, someone advertise um, at, a, at a phone booth? So then transport advertising. Um, there's airports, trains and buses. Um, so airports, you know, as I said here, there's external and internal. Because when you're driving into an airport, you'll notice that there's, air, there's advertising everywhere. There's banners and posters, and that's not even the half of it. When you go inside, that's where all the advertising really is. You know, you've got shop fronts left, right and centre. You know, you've got ads and posters everywhere. Because, you know, there's... Everyone wants to spend money. You've got a bit more um, holiday money. You've got a lot of time. You've got three hours to your flight and you're bored. Um, and people are boredom spending, really. And also that, people like buying gifts, you know, when they fly out, when they fly in. So, um, you know, of course, ad um, advertising at airport would be quite effective. Now, in Perth, you don't have much um, exterior advertising on trains, but in lots of other cities, you do. Um, and if you, you know, if the train's gone through a populated area, it's going to be really beneficial for the uh, for the advertiser. So many people will be able to be able to see the advert, and also lots of people will be able to see the adverts internally as well. Adverts are plastered up. This is also the same case with buses, um, especially they'd be might more be might more uh, be more effective in the area. So retail, lifestyle, and other. This is the final category, and you know it's just everything else. It's shop fronts, offices, um, universities, because there's just loads of people going through the areas. And, you know, it's effective. So why know this? To understand how to market strategically, knowledge of out-of-home advertising and the net promoter score becomes very useful. And being able to use both of these to your advantage gives the practitioner a strategic edge. Knowing how to effectively use NPS allows you to home in on your audience and effectively conveys the loyalty, uh, how loyal they are, really. Out-of-home advertising allows you to reach these audience members at times and locations that most other mediums are, are unable to do so. So to conclude, strategic marketing is formed by many techniques, two of which are out-of-home advertising and the net promoter score. Reaching and understanding your audience is always and will always be the most effective components of successful marketing. Thank you very much.